booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. Go fly. Guidance. Guidance go. Surgeon. Go fly. Econ. Go go fly. GNC. We're go. Tell me. Go. Control. Go fly. Procedures. Go. Inco. Go. Martian memories. Millions of eons ago, and many years before the last dinosaur died off, and the first human-like ancestors rose out of the mist. There was life on Mars. It was a proud, powerful civilization, and its inhabitants looked very much like our own. They had grown strong. Their sciences had flourished. They overcame many of the problems we now face against disease and overpopulation. They had learned how to clone, genetically engineer life, and to stop most diseases. Their technology had developed to such a degree that they had done much of the basic exploration of the solar system. Regretfully, one thing still held them back. They were quickly depleting their natural resources, which were petroleum-based, quite like our own, and their skies were bleak with the smog and CO2 cast off by their factories and lifestyle. Still, they had acquired vast knowledge through the centuries and this powerful and intelligent race of beings felt they were fast approaching the epitome of unity and spiritual consciousness. Then gradually, their secure world began to crumble. The atmosphere began to dissolve, the planet became hotter, and the seas and lakes slowly dried up. Food became scarce and wars broke out. The streets of their cities became filled with gangs and the nations became paranoid and bickered endlessly over natural resources and living space. Meanwhile, the United Martian leaders went ahead with plans to explore the local solar system, realizing that the emerald green planet near them might furnish the escape they needed to replenish their kind and survive the Holocaust destroying their planet. When they finally left Mars, it was in a horrible state of collapse, and the green orb they called Eridu was hostile jungle. Still they felt optimistic, feeling they could survive and genetically engineer their kind in this rich new environment. But you see, folks, that was long, long ago, and it has been millennia since then. Eridu had changed, and those first voyagers had long melted into the sands of time and only vestiges of their kind lingered in the genetic memory of our DNA. It is 2008 and that DNA is waking up. Technology has advanced. Science is curing most diseases and the planet is warming up. Humans are exploring the solar system just as their ancient ancestors from Mars had and they have landed probes on that now dry, cold wasteland. Signs of the Martian consciousness in us is also waking up too, as we fervently search for a glimpse of the life we instinctively knew was there so long ago. Our spirits reach out in hopeful memories, wishing, wanting to see those who had walked this rugged landscapes. With hope-filled eyes, we see it in the fragments of stones cast upon our shores, remnants of life that leave us all murmuring in joy. We search for water, the liquid of salvation, proof that there is still hope, that those we left behind still live. We grasp at every straw, the faint images of trees, the Martian face that stares vacantly back at us through space, the canali, the long curving tunnel-like structures. Can they be man-made? And what of the T and V-shaped rocks? Nothing like that can exist in nature. It must be Martian-made. And now finally, the vague outlines of a humanoid image, perhaps a woman. Could it be that someone waits for us in this lifeless figure? Forget the desolation, the arid wasteland, and the vast emptiness. She still waits for us. In our minds, Mars is alive, and this wonderful female is a sign of life. Our genes remember, even if we do not, and search for signs instinctively. Our spirits reach out, 
and the nearness of this buried quest that comes from so long ago burns inside us so bright its light warms Mars in the season's change. Surely we will return soon to our home from so far away and she will bloom with life once more.